Today we're going to be learning about solving word problems with integers. We're going to start off by just looking at the process that you're going to follow whenever you need to solve word problems with integers. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you need to actually read your word problem. And when you read it, you need to identify what is the important information that you are going to need to use uh, to actually solve the problem. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to write out your number sentence. So this is the method that you're going to use to actually solve the problem. So it could be an addition thing, it could be a subtraction, it could be a combination of addition, addition subtraction, multiplication, division. It depends on what the problem is that you've been given, how you're actually going to go about solving it. So your number sentence is how you're actually going to solve it. And sometimes your um, the word problem might re uh, require more than one step as well. So just be aware of that. Once you have identified how you're going to solve the problem, the next thing you need to do is actually solve it. And then finally, you are going to need to answer the question. Now, whenever you're given a word problem, you have a question that you are asked. So it may be something like how many books are in the library or how many sweets somebody has or something like that. So you need to answer the question. And to do that, you need to actually put it back into context again. So you can't just leave your answer as 20, you need to say 20 what? Is it 20 books? Is it 20 sweets? Is it 20 rand? Is it What is it? So you need to put it, your, your answer back into context again to actually answer the question that you have been asked. Okay, so that those are the steps that you're going to follow while you are solving the questions. So now let's go ha and have a look at our first example. So in this example, We have John who is playing a video game. He earns points by defeating monsters. At the beginning of the game, he starts with 500 points. For each monster that he defeats, he earns 50 points, but every time a monster hits him, he loses 100 points. John's character, wearing armor with a defense, defense rating of negative 20, defeats eight monsters and was hit by six monsters. How many points did John, does John have at the end of the game? Okay, so the first thing we need to do now that we've read it is we need to actually identify what information in this problem is relevant because not all of the information that has been given to us is information that is actually relevant that we actually need to use. So the first thing that we need to know is what is his starting amount? He starts with 500 points. So this is relevant over here. That is important information. Okay, the next thing we need to um, look at, it says for each monster that he defeated, that, or that he defeats, he earns 50 points. So that is important information. So he earns 50 points when he defeats a monster. Every time a monster hits him, he loses 100 points. Again, that is important information. John's character wearing armor with a defense rating of negative 20. Now this over here, the, the defense rating of the armor isn't going to be relevant to us. It doesn't tell us anything about what's happening to his points. So even though you've got a number over here, it doesn't actually have anything to do with our solution of this problem. Sometimes you'll be given a question where they'll put in extra information to confuse you or to throw you off. This is not relevant to us. We're not going to use it. Okay. But when it says that he defeated eight monsters, that is relevant because we know how many points he loses for every monster that he, or how many points he gains for every monster that he defeats. So it's important for us to know um, how many monsters he defeated. And he was hit by six monsters. Again, that is important because we know how many points he loses for every monster that hits him. So we need to know how many monsters hit him. And then the, the question that we need to answer is how many points does John have at the end of the game? So this is when we are doing our final step. This is the important, uh, the important question that we need to go back and answer again. Okay, so now let's go and actually solve this problem. So first of all, the information that we've be, been given helps us to know that he started with 500 points. Okay, so because he started with 500 points, that is what I'm going to start with over here. Then every time he uh, defeated a monster, he gains points. And every time he 
is hit by a monster, he loses points. Now, there's more than one way of actually writing this out, okay? The way I write it over here is not necessarily the only way that you can write it. So I'm going to say just every time he encounters a monster and then say what happens. So if he, when he encountered the monsters that he defeated, that was eight monsters, what happened to his points? He gained 50 points because he defeated them. Okay, and then he encountered six point, uh, six monsters that hit him. And so what happened to his points? He lost points. He lost 100 points each time. Okay, now you could also have written this like this. You could have said 500 plus 8 times 50 to say that his points increased by 50 every time he defeated a monster and he defeated 8 monsters. And then minus 6 times 100. So this is just another way of writing the exact same thing. Both of these will give you the exact same uh, same answer. Doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay. So now I've got 500. Bedmass says I need to do multiplication first. So 500 is going to stay as it is. Then plus 8 times 50 is plus 400 and then plus 6 times negative 100 is minus 600. So again, like I said, this would have given us the same thing as what we had over there. This also would give us 500 plus 400 minus 600. The same um, next step. Now we're going to go and simplify this. 500 plus 400 is 900 minus 600 is 3. Hundred. So now I've done my first step, that was to read and to identify the important information. The second step was to write my number sentence, that was this one over here. That's my number sentence. And the third step is to solve. So I've done the first three steps. My last step, which I must never forget, is to go back and put it back into context, context to answer the question. So now I can say, therefore, John has 300 points. And now I've answered the question that was being asked. The question was, how many points does John have at the end of the game? The answer is, John has 300 points at the end of the game. Now you could also have done this a little bit quicker just by writing 300 points over there. That would be acceptable as well. Okay, so now you're going to do a question on your own. So in this question, you are going to work out the temperature based on a starting temperature of negative 5 degrees Celsius in the morning, then the temperature dropped by 8 degrees, and then it rose by 3 degrees, and they want to know what is the temperature now. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to work this one out. Okay, let's go through that example. So in question A, we're starting with negative 5 degrees Celsius. That's important. We need to know how much it dropped by and we need to know how much it rose by. So there's no information in this question that isn't relevant. Okay, so I'm starting with negative 5. Then it dropped by 8 and then it rose by 3. So that is what my number sentence looks like. Okay, now I'm going to simplify that. So I've got negative 8, or negative 5 minus 8 gives me negative 13, plus 3 is negative 10 degrees Celsius. You could also have written, therefore, the temperature now, the temperature is negative 10 degrees Celsius now, or something like that. Or you can just leave it like that if you want to as well. Okay, so that's what you should get for question A. Right, please don't forget to put in the degree Celsius, otherwise you're not actually answering the question. The next question. We have got Sarah 
who withdrew 200 rand from her bank account. She spent half of it on groceries and then gave 20 rand to her friend. How much money does she have left? Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute again to work on this one. Okay, so let's just go through and check what information over here is important. So we've got Sarah withdrew 200 rand. So this is important because this tells us how much money she started with. Okay, she spent half of it on groceries. So that's important. She spent half and then she gave 20 rand to her friend. That's also important. That also affects how much money she has at the end. So all of the information that they gave here is important. It doesn't matter what she spent it on. It doesn't matter who she gave to, but we need to know that she spent half of it and that she gave 20 Rand. So now we need to know how much money does she have left? That is the question that we are going to have to answer. Okay, so let's go and work that one out. So in question B, we're starting with 200 Rand. That's what she, that's how much she withdrew. So that's how much cash she had to start with. Okay. Then she gave, or she spent, sorry, she spent half of it on groceries. So to work that out, first of all, when she, when you spend money, we're going to be subtracting. Okay. And to work out half of the 200 Rand, we're going to take the 200 and divide it by two. That is going to give us half of 200 Rand. And then she gave again. So because she's giving, we're going to put a minus and she gave 20 Rand to her friend. So it's going to be minus 20. So now I'm going to go and simplify this. Now, first, remember, bed mass says that we need to do division first. So I'm going to do that division over there. So it's 200 minus 100 minus 20. And now I can simplify my subtraction. 200 minus 100 minus 20 gives me 80. And because this is money, it's 80 Rand. Okay, so now I have done my first step, which was to read the question and identify the important information. Second step was to write down my number sentence. Then I had to solve it. And then I had to answer the question, which in this case was putting it back into the context of money, making it 80 Rand. So I could also have said over here, therefore she has 80 Rand to answer the question over there. Okay. Next question. Blue House at HSHS started the day with 85 points. Nine house members gained and lost points during the day as follows. Jenna was awarded 10 points for good work in maths class. Jerome lost 15 points for talking during geography. A group of four friends were found cheating during a test and they lost 30 points each. Sipo, Andile and Mark each gained 10 points for playing well during their cricket practice. How many points does Blue House have at the end of the day? Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this one.
Okay, so let's go through that. So first of all, let's go and identify what information is important. So we are trying to work out how many points Blue House has at the end of the day. So we need to work out or find out what information is going to affect the points that they have. So Blue House started the day with 85 points. So that is in important information. We need to know where they start. Nine house members gained and lost points during the day. The fact that nine house members gained or lost points is not relevant to how many points they end up with. We don't need to use that. Even though it's a number, it doesn't actually affect our calculation at all. So that's not relevant. Jenna was awarded 10 points for good work in maths class. Now, who it was and how she got the points isn't important. What is important is that, is that someone was awarded 10 points. So that's important. Jerome lost 15 points for talking during geography. So this again is important. Doesn't matter that it was Jerome, doesn't matter how he lost the points. What is important is that somebody lost 15 points. Then a group of four friends were found cheating during a test and they lost 30 points each. So over here, four friends lost 30 points each. That is what is important. And then Sipo, Andile and Mark each gained 10 points for, get, for playing well during their cricket practice. So here we've got, it's important that there are three of them. We need to know that, okay? So Sipo, Andele and Mark each gained 10 points for playing well during their practice. And then our question that we have to answer is how many points does Blue House have at the end of the day? Okay, so now let's go and solve this question. So we're starting off with 85 points. Then what happened is Jenna was awarded 10 points. So 10 points are added to Blue House's points altogether. Jerome lost 15 points. So we're going to subtract 15 points. And then a group of four friends were found cheating during a test and they lost 15 point or 30 points each. So we're going to have now minus four times 30. Each of those four friends lost 30 points. And then Sipo, Andele, Andile and Mark each gained 10 points. So there are three people and they each gained 10 points. So plus three times 10. So I'm going to now simplify this. Okay, so I've got 85 plus 10 minus 15. And now I'm going to sub I multiply negative 4 by 30 and that gives me minus 120 and then multiply positive 3 by 10 that gives me plus 30. So now I'm going to simplify my addition and subtraction. So I have 85 plus 10 is 95 minus 15 is 80 minus 120 is going to get me into negative points. So 80 minus 120 is negative 40 plus 30 is negative 10. So all of that gives you a final answer of negative 10. So Blue House is ending up in the negative at the end of the day. Okay, so I've done my number sentence. My first thing was to read the question, identify the important information. I did my number sentence, I solved it, and now I'm answering the question. I'm saying that it's negative 10. What is negative 10? Points. So I can also answer it like this. I can say, therefore, Blue House has negative 10 points. Okay. Right, the next question. A store started this morning with 60 shirts in stock. 47 customers came to the store altogether today. 32 of these customers took advantage of a 3 for 2 sale that the store was running on the shirts, getting 3 shirts each. The rest of the customers only purchased one shirt each. During the day, the store received a shipment of shirts. How many stock or how much stock would they have needed to receive to have enough shirts for all the customers today? Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this one.
Okay, so let's go through and find out what inf what information in this question is important. So a store started this morning with 60 shirts in stock. Now, because we want to find out how much stock they have at the end of the day, the amount that they started with is important for us. So they had 60 shirts in stock. That's important. 47 customers came to the store all together today. today. That is going to be important because we know that 32 of these customers took advantage of the 3 for 2 sale and bought three shirts each and so we need to know that there was 47 altogether to know how many were left to know the rest of the customers who only purchased purchased one shirt each okay so this 47 customers is important then 32 customers it doesn't matter that they were getting a three for two set um they were using a three for two sale what matters is that they got th three shirts each so 32 customers got three shirts each and the rest each purchased one shirt. Then during the day, the store received a shipment of shirts. How much stock would they have needed to receive to have enough shirts for all the customers today? So this is assuming that all the shirts that they had already were not enough for all the customers that were buying that day. So we need to know what is the minimum amount of shirts that they would have need to have received from the shipment in order to have enough for all the customers that actually came and bought shirts that day. Okay, so let's go and find out how much deficit of shirts there was. What, what, how many shirts did they have too few of to find out how much they would have need to, needed to have received in the shipment. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how we're going to approach this question. So first of all, we know that the, the store started with a stock of 60 shirts. There were 47 customers that came to the store. 32 of those customers bought three shirts each. So the stock is going to decrease because we have people buying the shirts and taking them out of the store. So we have minus 32 times three. Each of those 32 customers bought three shirts. And then we have minus, and now the way we're going to work this one out is to take the amount of customers, the total number of customers that there was, which was 47, and subtract 32 to find out what the rest of the customers were. So that's going to be uh, 47 minus 32. This is going to tell us how many customers bought one shirt each. And now we're going to go and simplify this. Okay, so now I've got 60 minus 32 times 3 is 96, minus 47 minus 32 is 15. And then just timesing that by 1 is going to stay 1. That's why I didn't worry about um, doing that there. Okay, so now I've got 60 minus 96 minus 15. So I've got over here 60 minus 96 minus 15. That gives me negative 51. Okay, so now I know that of the shirts that I had, they were all used up and an extra 51 were sold as well. Now, obviously, that isn't possible if there wasn't a shipment of shirts that was received. So in order for them to have had enough just for the customers who actually bought shirts that day, they have to have received at least 51 shirts. Now here I can't actually write it here because that it doesn't make sense to write negative 51 shirts. So now I need to answer and they need to say they need Okay, they could have received more than 51 shirts, but they could not receive less than 51 shirts because then they wouldn't have had enough shirts for all the people that came to buy shirts that day. Okay, so that's how we're going to solve that question. Right, the next question. A bookstore is offering a discount on books. Sandile finds three books that she wants to buy for 120 Rand, 180 Rand and 240 Rand respectively. Sandile has a coupon that gives her 50 Rand off the total purchase. The bookstore discount is then applied by reducing the final bill by 20 Rand for every 150 Rand due. If Sandile pays 500 Rand, how much change will she receive? Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this question.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, we need to identify what important information we're going to be using to solve this question. So a bookstore is offering a discount on books. Sandile finds three books that she wants to buy. It doesn't matter that it's three books. They've given us the prices of the books that she's going to be buying. So she's buying these books for 120 Rand, 180 Rand and 240 Rand respectively. So that's important, the prices of the three books. Sandile has a coupon that gives her 50 Rand off the total purchase. Then the bookstore discount is then applied by reducing the final bill by 20 Rand for every 150 Rand due. Okay, so this is going to be important as well. And then finally, if Sandile pays 500 Rand, how much change will she receive? This is the question that we are going to have to answer. How much change will she receive? That's the question. And the fact that she pays 500 Rand is also important information in order for us to work that out. Okay, so now let's go and actually solve this question. So for question E, first of all, we need to know how much that would she have owed if she didn't have any discounts or anything. That is the amount of the three books, the cost of the three books. So that's 120 plus 180 plus 240. And then we can straight away take off that the discount that you got from the coupon, which is the 50 Rand. Okay, because that isn't impacted by what has happened afterwards or anything. We can take that off straight away. So now we know this is how much she would have owed if she didn't have any discounts at all. And then because she had the coupon, we take off the 50 Rand over there. Okay, so now let's go and simplify that. So we have 120 plus 180 plus 240 minus 50. And that gives us 490. Okay, so I'm just going to write over here. This is how much is due. Before the bookstore uh, before the bookstore discount is applied. Okay. Now, the next thing that they tell us is that the, the bookstore discount is then applied by reducing the final bill by 20 Rand for every 150 Rand due. So what we need to now work out is how many 150 Rands are due. So to work that out, we're going to take the 490 that is due and divide it by 150. Okay, and that gives us 3.26 or 3 remainder 40. Okay, so now obviously you're not going to get the discount for a part of 150 Rand. So how many full 150s? It's 3. So therefore, the number of 150 Rand due is 3. And that is what we're going to be using then to work out how much of a discount she's going to be given. So now we're going to say, well, she owes 490 and we're going to subtract 3 times 20 because there are 350 rands due and she gets a discount of 20 rand for each of them. So it's minus 3 times 20. So that's 490 minus 60, which gives us 430 rand. So this is how much she owes. Now I need to go and work out how much change she will receive if she pays 500 Rand. Okay, so that's how much is due to the bookstore. Then we're going to say the 500 minus the 430. This is how much she pays and that's how much she owes. And then that gives us 70. So now we can say that Sandile will receive... 70 Rand change. Okay, so that is how you should have done question E. And then the last question for today. In a toy store, a new board game is being sold. The original price of the board game is 450 Rand. The store is currently offering a 50 Rand discount on the game. Additionally, for every game purchased, the store includes a bonus pack of game cards, which, which contains 10 extra cards for extended gameplay worth 100 Rand. Tom wants to buy two copies of the board game for his friend as well 
for his friends as well as one for himself. However, Tom has a coupon that gives him 10 Rand off for every 100 Rand of his purchase. Tom pays by card. If he has 840 Rand in his bank account before paying, what will his balance be after he pays? I'm going to give you three minutes again to work on this one. Okay, let's go through that question. So first of all, in a toy store, a new board game is being sold. The fact that it's new is not relevant. The original price of the game is 450 Rand. That is important. Okay, so the original price is 450 Rand. The store is currently offering a 50 Rand discount on the game. Okay, again, that's important. So anytime that game is being purchased, it's going to be 50 Rand less than the 450. So we're going to subtract the 50 from the 450. Additionally, for every game purchased, the store includes a bonus pack of game cards, which contains 10 extra cards for extended play worth 100 Rand. Now, this may all sound like it might be important, but it's actually not. It's not going to have any impact on the amount of money that somebody's going to pay because it's just an extra that's being added. Okay, it's a bonus. That's all. Tom wants to buy two copies of the game of the board game for his friends as well as one for himself. So he's buying three games all together. So that's important. So he's buying two copies as well as one for himself. Okay. However, Tom has a coupon that gives him 10 Rand off every 100 Rand of his, of his purchase. Tom pays by card if he has 840 Rand in his bank account, this is important, before paying. Why 
what will his balance be after he pays? So this is what we need to answer our question over here. What will his balance be after he pays? Okay, so now we're going to go and actually solve this question. So we've done step one, we've read it, we've identified the important information. So now let's go and find out how we're going to solve this question. So for question F, first of all, we need to know how much he is going to owe the books, the uh, toy store. So to work that out, we have, we have to take the price of, this, of the game, which is 450 Rand, and subtract the discount, and then multiply it by the number of games that he's purchasing. So it's three games that he's purchasing, multiplied by 450 minus 50. Okay, so here, this is the number of games he's purchasing, multiplied by the price of each game, which is worked out by saying 450 minus 50. Okay, so that is going to be 3 times 400, which is 1,200. Okay, so this is how much he would have to pay if he did not have a coupon. But he does have a coupon. So this is the amount before the coupon is added. So now the coupon allows him to get 10 Rand off for every 100 Rand of his purchase. So we need to work out how many 100 Rands there are in, this, in the amount that he owes. So 1,200 divided by 100 gives us 12. So that is the number of 100s that he can get a discount for. Okay, so now we can take the amount that he owes and subtract 12 100s because he's going to get a discount, I mean 12 10 rands, because he's going to get a discount of 10 rand for every 100 rand that he owes. So it's minus 12 times 10. And that gives us 1,200 minus 120, which gives us 1,000 and 80 rand okay so this is how much is he, how much he owes the book the toy store after a, his discount is applied okay so now we know how much he owes now it says that Tom pays by card if he has 840 rand in his bank account what will his balance be after he pays so the amount of money he has in his account is 840 and now whenever you pay, obviously the amount of money is going to go down, so we're going to subtract 1,080. But now obviously the amount that he owes the, the toy store is more than what he has, so he's going to end up with a negative balance. So we have 840 minus 1080, and that gives us negative 240. Okay, so that means that he ends up with a negative balance of negative 240 Rand. Okay, so that is how we do um, solving of word problems using integers. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.